Okay. Mr. Holly, open checkbook. Yep, so I just want to give an update and the process we've gone through so far with open checkbook. Um, so uh, our meeting two weeks ago, uh, we decided to go on open checkbook. Uh, that was a Tuesday before Thanksgiving and uh, the office was closed those next three days. So we reconnected with open checkbook on the following Monday and they told us uh, what information they required uh, to start the process. Uh, we got that to them uh, first thing Tuesday morning and uh, we just received an email back from them uh, at noon today saying that uh, the beta site is, uh, is running and they would like to come in and uh, walk through that with us and make sure it's uh, running the way that it needs to. So we have set up an appointment with them for this Thursday at 9 a.m. and that is uh, that's where we currently are with that process. What does that mean? The beta site's up? Does that mean we've already sent them information? or does Yeah, so we've already sent them information. Uh, so they have it on the site. They didn't even give us a list or uh, a, uh, a link to the site. They just said it was up and running on the beta site at this point. And we'll look at that on Thursday. So yeah, so we have sent them information at this point in time. <coughs> Is that the year's worth or just less until it's Yeah, created? so we just put the year in just to make sure it's up and running correctly. All right, thank you. Any questions? All right. Uh, next, uh, discuss the potential of a March levy, which may include the passage of first of two resolutions for the March ballot. Anybody want to start? Oh, yeah. um, thanks for carrying on without me last week. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, those who don't know, I was in St. Louis and also thrown my back out, so it was a lovely, uh, it was a lovely day. Um, <clears throat> so I think one of the things what I got out of everything uh, that I was able to parse um, from last week was definitely whatever we need to do needs to be clearly communicated. And, very clear on what we do. It has to be not too big to show that we are seriously addressing um, an issue <coughs> and concerns of unsustainable expenditure growth. It can't be too small to take away from the student successes that we have had over the last couple of years. Um, and just to be clear what some of those are, if we looked at the Ohio Report Guard, 2016-17 to 18-19, we have moved our scores from an achievement score from a C to a B, gap closing from an F to an A, progress from a D to an A, overall value added from an F to an A, value added from gifted from a C to an A, value added lowest 20% from an F to an A. These, <coughs> excuse me, these are not small gains or small outcomes. So whatever we do and look at it, it needs to be in the context of student success. Um, that's really where I'm coming at this from. Okay. Anybody else? Can I just add to the uh, clear communication that um, I think one thing we need to do is figure out how we're receiving communication back. Not only do we need to communicate clearly, um, but we need to, um, I don't know if it's clear a channel or if it's um, have surveys or if it's um, have regular meetings for information. Um, it's uh, very difficult to um, accept or not accept in the sense of um, allow it to come in. Very difficult to access and very difficult to um, compile all of the information that's coming into us. Um, and so in order to communicate that we are listening to that, I think we have to figure out the best way for the board to access that information, whether it's uh, having a clearinghouse house for information uh, instead of depending on a, a variety of social media platform or um, whatever that is. I think we need to talk about the communication back in as well as the communication out. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Great suggestion of something to look into. 
which is a I've reached like. out. I've reached out to a couple of um, other superintendents and colleagues for some ideas in that area. Uh, both Sycamore and Madeira have um, something that they call community advisory committee. They call it different things, but uh, both of those um, groups have um, executive. Uh, an executive committee that meets with the board and administrative staff three times a year and then uh, different community groups based on interest needs of the district and interest of the participants then go and do research throughout the year and then provide that back um, as part of the school improvement and district improvement process whether it be from a financial standpoint or program standpoint or things that they wanted to um, um, and both of those were, had been recommended to me when I reached out to um, uh, my mentor at the state. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know how people get, I, I haven't done enough research to know how people get invited to that, whether they apply, I don't, I don't know those details. Um, and then uh, some other area superintendents do um, some, uh, uh, I'll call it superintendent's advisory council, for lack of a better term, but a way to engage different groups of people in sharing uh, uh, current information or uh, you know, that's, that makes sense at the time um, and giving an opportunity to ask questions and sort of two-way communication. Uh, that looks a, a variety of different ways and uh, the different people that I've talked to. Some of that was a, um, a, a varied community and some of that was more locally centered around the school district, like having a rep from each PTA or having a rep from different <coughs> district organizations. So different districts have different ways to attack that. So what I would say is there's lots of models and I can continue to gather that information and then talk to those uh, people specifically about the how, what, where, when, and why, and um, what they wish they would have done differently and try and learn from some of those things and bring those back to you. Yeah, and something that I've thought about that I still want to explore more, we've been a little bit busy lately and now we have the holidays approaching but the community conversations, um, I would like to have more of those and see that happen so we can interact with everybody um, and just hear what's going on in the community, an opportunity to ask for them to ask questions, for us to ask questions and get feedback. Um, I just think that that would be good to see what we can do with it. So based on some of the things that like Lakota is doing in that area, I think Butler Tech is doing some similar things yeah. in that area. And have you heard from any school districts where they have an online forum where people who can attend meetings can submit, you know, beyond just email, but here's my feedback or here's my question. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I haven't asked that question. I agree because I'd like there to be one sort of place that we can go to look for sort of electronic feedback. I mean, I, I agree with all the ideas of having conversations, having face-to-face, -face, but there is a lot of electronic stuff out there and if, I think it would be helpful if the community knew what is officially monitored so that that kind of electronic stuff can come in and be sure that it's seen as opposed to layers of you know a Facebook page with comments that you can't always get Sorry. to those kinds of things. So tonight, uh, sorry. So tonight uh, we have some decisions to make uh, whether or not uh, to put a levy on the March ballot or to hold off on until August or November. Uh, and if we were to put one on the March levy, how much would that be for the March ballot? How much would that be? So. We'll start with that. First of all, does anybody have any questions to start it off? Or? So, Kevin, what are what are the details? What are we deciding on tonight in terms of uh, if we were going to move forward with a resolution? How set in stone is that? Then, along with the resolution that would be next week, is there? <coughs> Yeah, so the resolution this week is a resolution of necessity. Um, so you would want to come up with a, a millage amount, uh, then it's sent to the auditor to be certified uh, to determine how much revenue would be uh, produced with that certain millage given the valuation of the district. 
um, but you would want to come up with um, an, an actual millage amount tonight. If, if you were going to be moving on for March, uh, they need roughly a week to be able to certify it. And our evaluation was certified the end of June, is that correct? And so it would not have changed? So actually, it has, it has, it actually has slightly changed. So they do change, have, but I didn't know yeah. if they certified it differently. Uh, they will certify it differently. So I checked with the auditor on that. They will certify it based on uh, 19 numbers. Uh, they have sent me the 19 numbers. And actually, it's it's almost exactly the amount that we had in the forecast. I think it's like, like $200 off. I mean, so we were forecasting pretty well. Um, so all the numbers that we've been utilizing um, have been based on what the current valuations are in the district. So all three counties have given their numbers in at this point. What's that? Um, so it was one eight seven eight. Yes. So now it is. Let me add it up. <laughs> Give me a second on that. So you can ask other questions. I was just going to say, just, I guess to get to the meat of it, are we going to go through numbers and what would need to be to get to this number, what would need to be get to get to this number? <coughs> so Kevin and I have been working through uh, um, Actually, putting actual numbers to, <clears throat> I mean, some of them are estimates because if you if you're looking at a, you know a reduction in um, a tenured a position that a tenured staff member holds, then the actual um, when a RIF list would be created, that would actually be um, something lower um, or more recently hired. Uh, so that the, those actuals come a little bit later, but we did we did start to play around with some of those things um, to get closer and to really look at um, our ability to um, make some reductions through attrition. So I presented um, a list of cuts to Kevin that um, protected the, protected the trajectory that we're on from that academic standpoint. Um, so, I, uh, we, obviously we were uh, removing the two additional teachers from the forecast so that um, our trajectory wouldn't change, but our pace to get there potentially would change and some of our flexibility to achieve that would, would change. Um, but that doesn't, wouldn't significantly, sorry, doesn't like me. Uh, wouldn't significantly uh, try to keep that away, as far away from programming and from our, those, those goals that we have in our improvement plan. So it looked like uh, uh, reducing some tech support. Uh, uh, obviously, we have already eliminated some consultants, reducing or removing those from the, uh, the additional teachers from the forecast. Um, and then through attrition, uh, through scheduling, reducing some supervisory duties of teachers, and then reallocating work to different staff. Um, I uh, have recommended uh, 14 staff members, reduction of 14 staff members through that process. That's a combination of administrators, uh, classified staff, and certified staff. And um, I know a couple last meeting and the one before a couple of people had mentioned at least researching looking into the possibility of a retirement buyout is that something that we've looked at the cost for the district so that that's a much bigger process that Kevin can certainly talk to in more detail but we don't really have that many uh, staff members up in that real close range so you know the further away you are from retirement or the more costly yeah. that buyout would be but that's certainly something to consider um, later but not for tonight um, additionally uh, uh, reducing the instructional cycle you know if you'll recall that's you know that's the ability to uh, review each uh, con uh, each content area on a, on a cycle, which supports PD, it, it supports the research of new instructional materials and updating instructional materials for students, but cutting that, um, cutting that in half 
Um, initially, we'd invested a significant amount in that. We hadn't had that process in place for a number of years, so we, we participated, we did that investment. Um, now everybody has gone through that cycle once, so I recommended cutting that in half and then reducing um, our support, our professional development support from the county. Um, and when I um, felt like those were the cuts that would get us to, that wouldn't impact our ability to continue to meet our goals in the way we were doing them, uh, that got us at seven and a half mils. So by reducing the instructional cycle, how many years would that put us out to five? So, so there wouldn't, just tell me if I'm okay. understanding this correctly, there wouldn't be any new programs or changes to the curriculum? No, it could be. It just wouldn't be full. It, would, it couldn't be full. Yeah, it couldn't be full adoptions where you would start over from scratch. It would be, you know, this piece doesn't work, looking at it slower, uh, you know, just slowing that pace down. Um, for how often those came up, slowing maybe the professional development around that, all that is an investment in that cycle. Okay. Um, so then, um, then uh, Kevin pushed me to what would be the next, uh, pushed me below, said, okay, let's try and get below seven. Um, so he sent me back to the drawing board and uh, um, then Feel like uh, working the administrative staff you know came together to identify uh, those big those areas where they thought they could um, they could start to talk about but you don't want to touch one without the other so you don't want to be all focused you don't want to be heavy focused on one grade level or heavy focused on all PD so how do we continue to support teachers if we cut our PD services over here how do we continue to make sure teachers have access to develop and to grow and to improve craft because I would say well I, I appreciate the fact that instructional materials were purchased and that helped improve student achievement what I would say is the investment in our teachers and the work that they have done in delivering instruction and selecting those materials that has had the most significant gain um, that, that we should, I would attribute the most significant gains to the work the teachers have done together in that area. So trying to be really cognizant of that. Uh, so um, that being said, we worked with, <clears throat> talked with the administrative team. We can reduce that instructional cycle even more, and that's an average. If we cut that by 75%, the, uh, the principals feel like they can sort of over, was that five years or 10 years that they talk? Uh, it was five years that we have in the forecast. Okay, they built that five out. Years so five, that they can they can bank that. So that puts it at fifty thousand dollars a year. So they can go no no save that, and then when they get to when it's time to re up those math programs, then they can invest that two hundred at that time. So that average is out over those um, over those years. So we can get to seventy five on that. They felt like um, we would look for an additional four uh, classified staff. Um, add our uh, decreases at that point and continue to reduce um, any of our contracted services left and get into a bit of the support of students and teachers from that contract support. And that would get us below seven. So I would say the impact at that point starts to have an impact on teachers as a uh, professional development starts to diminish significantly they don't have as many as access to innovate and opportunities to change some instructional materials um, that they've had in the past five years and we would start to look at it would start to touch some some support for students in classrooms we would make sure that was spread across the grade levels that no one was hit too hard on that but again that that's that could be manageable. It starts to affect things, but the administrators felt like that was manageable. And still stay on target for their goals. Can, can you talk a little bit more about the instructional cycle on that? So we're talking about cutting 50 or 75 percent of them. How does that not impact what we're trying to accomplish? So initially, we, uh, we budgeted $400,000 per year for five years and then divided up all of the different, like math and world languages and PE, all of them, divided them up across that. 
and invested that money in making sure it took us five years to get through all content areas. So now we've been through those content areas. Now they've, they've got the materials in place. Now we'll, we'll um, sort of be on a, on a maintenance. What are those things are working well? Let's keep doing those. Is there something that our data would show we must have to close a gap in one of our target areas? We would look at supplementary or look at small changes to that and take a pause on that. Do you know the length of, typical <coughs> length of time for some of the higher achieving school districts? Just because I don't want to see our students suffer. In so that world. used to vary, uh, but now um, most of the textbook companies uh, operate in six year cycles. And so by default, school districts have fallen into that six year cycle. Gave those numbers to Kevin, he told me 6.95. Again, I mean, I have to write them again, but I, that's what I wrote down right now. Yes, that's correct. I, I apologize ahead of time for asking this question because it may be not something that has been figured in this. You're, you're coming at this from a list of things that we could. Um, cut back, and, and I hear you hitting sort of our biggest spending area, I mean, the, because that is where our biggest percentage of, of spending is. Do you know what this does to our percentages on our forecast? Because our five-year forecast is simply that, a forecast. It's not a, um, it's a spending plan, but it's not, if we needed, when we had that forecast, if we were keeping that, if we needed the two teachers in the classroom, we would get those two class two classroom teachers. If we had to add a program, instead we would get a teacher for that and do, you know, so we did some things to stay within that forecast. Do you know what either of these sets of reductions does to that percentage that we were figuring in our five-year forecast? Yes, yeah, so without changing any assumptions, so like we talked about the assumptions on uh, healthcare, and we talked about, um, the assumptions that we currently have on salaries, um, it's getting you closer to a three and a half percent. So if we pull it up right now, it's just sub three and a half percent. So again, that's keeping the same assumptions of nine percent on health insurance. Um, so yeah, you know, those details. So total expenses is just below three and a half percent. Is that with both of those, or is that with the, the first or the second the second one getting to the 6.95? It would be with the second one, that's yeah. correct. And I'm sorry, you said 9% for the health insurance. Is that where it was before, or was it at 10? Uh, it was at 9% before. Okay. Kevin, if you go from 8.95 down to 7.95 down to 6.95, I mean, what, what dollar amounts are we talking about? So every mill is roughly 900,000 to get back to uh, Ned's question on our valuation. It's just below uh, 890 million in the district. So that's why we've been using for each mill, it's roughly $900,000 in revenue. Um, so every every mill is nine hundred thousand dollars, approximately. So if you're going down to six point nine five mills, with what we talked about originally, you're looking at roughly two point seven million dollars in cuts. <coughs> Amy, what six look like? Getting down to six. Getting down, yeah. So, down to six. so the next set, the next $900,000 set, <coughs> would look like um, 
uh, increasing uh, pay to participate fees at the secondary level. It could look like, or would look like, the recommendation would be to uh, reduce another nine positions. We'd look at reducing our in house security positions and then an additional four certified positions and three classified positions, likely, unless Sorry, attrition. Back. You say all that again, the, mm -hmm. said nine positions, and then what did you say? So of those nine positions, we're looking at reducing our in-house security support and uh, looking at uh, some certified in class, additional certified in classroom positions that would put us at 27 total cut positions. <coughs> And that's for total cut or is that in also uh, not, correct. Not yes, less. yes, combination. And that's for six line or less than six? Less than six, that's less getting under six. six. Okay. And then also eliminating high school busing. then start to impact so when we get into that level of staffing cuts then we're looking at uh, a significant impact to student support we'd be looking at any program certainly we'd be targeting any program that had been newly added or recently added um, we'd be looking at programs that are not required um, at the state level um, and then but in order to identify exactly what programs those would be, we'd want to go back to the I want to go back to the administrative team to start working through that. What kind of number were you figuring a pay to participate change would be? I mean, I, I'm feeling like it's such a small number based on the you know 2.7 million or the the 3.6 million dollars if we're going down another hand. Yeah, so uh, so the athletic department looked at uh, some neighboring districts, looked at some other um, kind of benchmarking uh, ECC schools. Uh, so what you know at, at bare minimum, just when we're talking about that, I mean obviously you could look. At very different depending on the size, um, but we would be looking at uh, potentially about $175 per sport. So right now, most sports we're at $105. Um, football and lacrosse we're at $155. And so that, that would be the difference on that. Um, but I meant more, how much does that affect the budget? I, I wasn't thinking that that yeah. was a very no, it's, large number. Um, it's potentially around sixty to seventy thousand dollars if it increases to that amount. I mean, not that I'm, I'm um, saying no to any number that helps the budget. I just didn't think that was what we were hanging our. And that one, I mean, this might be stupid, but wouldn't that one be easy to move up to that second category of six point nine five to take a little more off? Does it? Does it seem now? I mean, it certainly will impact people, but it will seem to impact fewer. Sure. I mean, that's always an option. The board can certainly look at that. I felt like I was sort of charged with how can we continue to meet our academic goals and what, what, what the fees are don't necessarily affect that. So, right. Yeah, that's why I was thinking maybe yeah. that one would be mm -hmm. an easy one if it means potentially less of an impact on the classroom. Yeah, so 60 to $70,000 is roughly 0 0.07 cents. Just uh, keep in mind. Okay. Can you say that again? 0.07 mils is roughly <coughs> 70 grand. And I know you don't remember this because you're, you're new, but I don't remember. I've been having so much fun. I just don't remember when we last looked at this, but we did go through a, a major review of the athletic um, fees. It seems like it wasn't that long ago, but it could be it's a while now. It was probably three or four years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, lacrosse, lacrosse came on okay. as a major That's sport. I knew we'd gone through sort of everything. Yeah, so that kind of 
spurred on uh, taking a look at the piece. So head, heading down towards six mills, you know, so you said nine more positions. Mm -hmm. I mean, so if you're looking at them incrementally, I mean, if you're looking at one more position, that one more position is going to start having more of an impact on our academic trajectory than the ones we're talking about more at the seven mill mm -hmm. level. The 14 to 18, the administrators feel like they can. I mean, that is 18 less bodies. Yeah. Let's be clear, those are people. Right. But um, those are, um, the administrators feel like they can still continue to meet their goals and deliver their program. Does that change class sizes at all? No. It may change support in a class from a opportunity to support kids in class or from a pullout perspective, but it's not going to, it's not going to get into if we add, if we reduce the first grade teacher, here's what that does to class size. I can tell you that, but um, I mean, that, that number doesn't start to touch that. We start getting into looking for these nine additional staff members, and we're going to look at, well, you know, we would look at program first. Again, programs that aren't required by the state or the things that we've added most recently, those would be things that we'd want to talk through. And one of the, we talked talk about, uh, reason we identify that additional mill is that, you know, if, if the board were to determine to go in March, then you have to be prepared for, if it were to fail, then you want to come back with less. So if 6.95 wasn't achievable, then asking for the same seems that you would want to ask for less. So then we started to look at what would those, what would that less look like to get us at if after a failure in March. So that was that conversation that uh, Kim was pushing me to identify. So if we were to challenge you to get below set, what, what's, uh, for me, so let's say security's not an option, busing's not an option, say those nine positions are not an option. What, if we were trying to, we were to challenge you to get below the 6.95, and you took off security and positions? Yep, and busing. And busing? Yep. Get you $60,000. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know what that would be. I mean, any cuts in supply budgets or any cuts in building budgets are, I mean, those are minimal cuts. It, it takes people to move that needle. With logistically between going out in March and going out in November would change in August going into the next fiscal year if we didn't get the levy in March. So I think the bigger question would be you know, from Kevin that if a failure in March gives us another 2020 option to to get where we need to be, a failure in November eliminates a year of collection. And so I think we talked last time that in order to get back to the original, it's 11 and a half mills. So it would be all of these plus another $4 million in cuts. And based on the metric that Kevin gave me to work through, $4 million is an additional 40 to 50 staff members. I couldn't, I'm not at all prepared to tell you what that would look like. Yeah, so just touch quickly on that. So um, let's say uh, March ballot and there's failure, uh, the November would give another opportunity. Um, I think it makes sense at that point we would have to find additional cuts, which we've discussed, for um, a potential lower millage amount in November. Uh, if you strictly go in November and it does fail, you have one year's less revenue. Um, in order to get back to whatever millage was on in November, so whatever that millage was in November to get back to that point in the following May, it would be either roughly, and this is based on the current forecast numbers, is roughly 11 and a half mills or $4 million more in cuts. So that's what, you know, about how, how November looks different than, than March. It doesn't look any different on the upfront. It's that if, 
It's the contingency plan that would look differently. One thing that would be different if we decided not to put a March issue on the ballot, it seems to me, tell me if my thinking is wrong on this, that we would almost have to, if we were going to do anything with busing, we would have to do that before the school year starts in order to be able to include that in cuts that get us to our November number because we could not cut busing in January, for example. Correct. So that was a law that was changed this past year that went into effect in October. Um, outside of that, there's not necessarily restrictions, but with, with transportation, that is correct. So nothing else that you can not cut mid-year? I checked, I, 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 I checked with colleagues, I checked with legal as well, and, and uh, that, that is correct. So the only one that they're familiar with is transportation. <coughs> So if we don't put a levy on in March or August, I don't think, would August even be included in that? We will start the school year with not, without some of the busing? Is that what I'm hearing? No, I just said we, we would, if we were going to use a cut in busing as part of the reduction that got us to the millage <coughs> that we wanted to put on in November, if, if we wait until November for an issue, we would have to go ahead and do the busing cut if that was going to be a part of our plan. We could not say, let's see how the levy goes in November, and then we can cut. It, it would have to be cut. So it would have to be cut before, or you'd have to wait <coughs> an entire year to yeah. do that. I wouldn't say we should cut it. I was just saying with other options. What's the high school busing number? Um, it's approximately $315,000 a year. flexibility that we have and problem solving and being able to pivot quickly to meet the needs of different things but I, the, I believe the principals um, feel like they can accommodate that reallocate work and make and make that happen and still achieve their goals Was that at the not at the pace that we're meeting them now but I think we can continue to do that I was just asking because I didn't that's the gear below the, the seven 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 point five seven. Yeah. or the it's six point seven. Seven. Yeah. And remind me in the to get to the seven point five, we were talking fourteen staff members, and I know that you know our bus drivers and our administrators are just as important to our students as teachers. But if we those fourteen in the seven point five mills, and then the additional four in the to get to the six nine five. How many teachers is that? It's a combination. So um, we certainly want to look for um, opportunities for attrition to, if there were opportunities for attrition to have some staff members design, let's try to utilize that so that we wouldn't have to make a different cut. Right. So that would, we would have some time to identify some of those and restrictions. This, this is purely hypothetical, but what you're talking about making some changes, just say we were talking six teachers, and all six teachers who were ready to retire were first grade teachers. We would not reduce first grades by six. We would reallocate and move people. Sure, or we could look like, so if a, if a general ed classroom teacher uh, retired, we could, you know, how could we reallocate staff to not replace that teacher? So, you know, in, 
you know, in the attrition list right now, we have an administrator, a teacher, and four, yeah, six, four classified staff. So through scheduling and reallocation of some duties, we've identified four certified staff. So we would be looking to pick up the additional staff either through attrition or through identification with the administrative team about how do we spread that out to make sure that um, a certain grade level, a certain building, a certain population wasn't <coughs> fairly targeted to produce additional support so that we could maintain that balance. If I heard you, correct, you correctly, the, the scheduling was it's five certified staff. Did I say? You said right? four. Okay, five. My head, I said. Thank you. What's the dollar amount for a hundred thousand at seven point five? Because last week you said at seven point nine five, it's mm -hmm. two hundred and seventy-eight. So you're talking about for the homeowner. Mm -hmm. So it's seven and a half mils, it's two hundred and sixty two dollars and fifty cents per hundred thousand. What was that? Two hundred and sixty two dollars and fifty cents. <coughs> That's for seven point five? Correct. What is that? What's a six nine five? Two hundred and forty three dollars and twenty five cents. You're $243.25. $243 That's 6.95 points. Okay. Okay. Some districts do that. Uh, currently, the pay to pay, pay to play fees pay for transportation. So 60% of the fees currently go towards transportation. That's the transportation for the athletic events and yes. other events that we. Yes, just athletic events. So, Kevin, a lot of numbers. Getting to this second tier, 6.88. <laughs> An estimated 3.5, roughly, percent growth rate. This takes us to when? So, this is similar to the to the operating month that was in November, that this would last a minimum of three years. So that would be uh, spring or fall of 
23. That's getting us to that point while still maintaining the balance? Yes, correct. Based on the current forecast, it would be help maintaining a healthy cash balance up until that point. Which gives us roughly two months. Yeah, just about two months of expenses. But it's taking the two teachers per year out each year? Yes. The two additional. The two additional teachers, yeah. Whereas the other cuts are cuts now, but not each year. We're looking for another set of um, Correct. cuts in the personnel. But the, the two additional teachers that we've been budgeting in order to be able to cover new programs for a bump in class size or a different, a different need, those would be gone each of those three years. And right. So if we were to need additional staff, say, for a program like that, to, to comply with something based on um, numbers, then we would have to uh, accommodate that through attrition. <coughs> so we'd have to look at what do we say when a veteran staff person leaves us and then we hire at a, um, a staff member with less experience? How do you structure, how do you recover that to stay within our budget? And we have not yet forecast our needs for the 2021 20, year. I know we each, we have a running, um, staffing needs sheet that shows who we have, who's retired, not who, I'm sorry, not people with names, but we have a number of classes, we have a number of programs, and we have who might be retiring, we have what change might happen in a program, and so we have a forecast of staff, and we have not yet forecast. We typically do that in January, um, because then our uh, our building leadership teams start working on their updating their improvement plans for the next year um, so that those things fit together you know what does our staffing look like currently and then in how do we how do we staff your goals right. so that'll you know that would just change our conversation with our principals for them to have with the BLT is how do we achieve our goals without um, without adding program without that staff how do we reallocate the staff that we have in order to still achieve those goals and prioritize the work that we need to do. <coughs> and over the next three years, we are not projecting an increase in enrollment rate. Correct. Flat. Yes. Two. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Any increases in enrollment that are following through, like a large class? This year's third grade is a, little, is a little is larger, and this year's sixth grade actually is larger. So as we track that through, eighth grade also bigger. Is that as we track that through, you, you know, we can rearrange within the grade levels. So Amy, how? How difficult, regardless of what we do, what the size is, when we do it, whatever. I think for the community to be behind anything, it needs to be very well laid out of what's involved and so where we're trimming. It is when, or I guess how long would, until we would be able to really specify that and communicate that, get that in a clear communication of what this so uh, uh, six, the 6.95 would be easier than going any further below that. But anytime we're talking about reduction in staff, talking about RIF, and that's a, you know, we have to meet with the lawyer, we have to meet with our associations and create and agree upon that RIF list. So in order to, I, I, I can, I could, you know, say we're going to reduce, um, uh, we're going to we're going to re uh, work on this, tighten up the schedules and reduce supervisory duties at the high school. So that's going to be a reduction. But in order to identify who that is, that's certainly. Um, so I can I can 
talk about that in at the macro level, but until we've until we've met with legal and met with our associations to go through RIF lists, um, that's uh, embargoed information. That's pr uh, private information. Anything other than staffing as well, we can. Uh, yeah, anything that's not in touching staffing, we can we can be very clear about. And staffing, we can be generally clear about, but it can't be. Um, you can't say, oh, that's the person who helps in the second grade classroom. Like, you know, like, we wouldn't know who that was. Right, and we would expect But anything other than the staffing could immediately be modeled in the five-year forecast. I mean, there's no, not that we would right. adopt a new five-year forecast, right. to, to, but it could be modeled in the five-year forecast. Right. All of those other things are, are a simple modeling Here's, here's where it cuts. And we can certainly be clear about contracts that we have that we would, you know, we would be ending X contracts with X county agency. Um, we'd be clear about all of those things and notify those agencies. Um, that's, you know, that's not an issue. Um, but we, you know, certainly any administrative cuts, we want to make sure that we have those conversations um, before um, specifics about that with public. So that we honor, honor you know people. Again, 18 people is 18 people, and making sure those people that all have the courtesy of a conversation. You know, I'm going to ask the next question. When would we be able to put details, not on staffing, but details together? Is that something? At the end of the year, that can be crafted for communication sure. on what this truly looks like. Sir, I mean, if we have if we have direction for March, we can I mean, like like color coding and dots and post-it notes get look like a like a real document. Like a real document. Mm -hmm. okay. I was going to ask the board if they are prepared if. A decision was made tonight um, to put a March issue on. Is the board prepared to discuss next week? Obviously, there would be a meeting next week for the final decision. Would we be prepared to discuss um, the board's role in communication as far as it's concerned? I mean, there's no way that um, obviously a, a campaign committee would be formed. Um, very quickly, and that's not the board's job anyway to form a campaign. <coughs> Would the board be ready to discuss um, efforts to um, sort of clear up our communication and clear lines of communication? So we'd be ready to discuss that so that in January the board is ready to. Um, because otherwise, I think putting a March issue on is going to leave us with a week of um, people not knowing how we're going to communicate to them. And I, I just don't I'd like to see some kind of a community communication or extended communication committee that has more than us. It's not, I'm just saying it's we, haven't, we haven't discussed that as a board. And are we, if that to me would be a part of a decision to put a march on, to start the process for a march issue. The board has to be prepared to figure out its role in communication. Um, and, and I would assume it would start as soon as next week. Um, so that whatever um, details we have worked out, we have the plan of how the board is going to communicate them. Yeah, we have to do that ASAP. But I, I haven't heard anybody say whether or not they're ready to. to make a motion to that effect. Yeah. Let's let's chew on that for a few minutes, if yeah. we could. Um, since you brought it up, let, if I, if you don't mind, let's let's shift the conversation a little bit about less numbers and about maybe some of the ways we're doing business going forward. Um, you brought it. You brought up a. You said communication committee. Um, I think, and, and I'll just throw these things out here and, and open them up for discussion. 
I think there's a few things that no matter what we decide tonight need to be started. We need to get them put into the works. Uh, the first one is just uh, beginning of the year moving forward with the uh, compensation committee. Um, I, I like the idea of putting together some type of community committee. And that committee, in my opinion, would be charged with a number of different things. You know, we can talk about, obviously, communication. Um, bringing the finance, bringing the facilities. We need some music. Say, yeah. Can they come you, in here and play? You want to take, we'll take a break and go watch some band concert? So, are you thinking, are in in sort of in the spirit of what some of our our neighbors are doing, or something? Yes. So, yeah. being able so, to come. In my mind, when I heard you talk, I'm thinking coming in January, having talked to, having talked to my colleagues, <laughs> I have to be the grass section. Grass section, telling us they're here. Sure. Um, so I can envision, you know, talking to my colleagues and, and getting some, you know, how many people are in the committee? How long is it been? Like, how do you choose your topics? How do you how do people get on the committees? Just gathering some of that information, and um, I can envision preparing for you uh, in January just sort of a, a summary, a list like you know here's Madeiras, here's what they do, here's Sycamores, here's what they do, here's Lakotas, here's what they do, so you can sort of see what some of our colleagues have done. Doesn't mean that any of those are the exact right way, but you can see um, some of the quality of the work that some of our neighbors have done. And I can give that to you in January? Yes. <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. You know, I, I guess how I look at this is we need to back the bus up a little bit, to use a school analogy. So, you know, back the bus up. I think, in my opinion, we were heading in the right direction. Maybe too far, too fast. Okay? Maybe that's an understatement. Um, back the bus up, we pick up some more people, put them on the bus, that's how far this analogy goes. Um, and, and so from the standpoint of communication, from the standpoint of facilities, from the standpoint of school finance, from the standpoint of um, student experience, there's, I mean, this is, call my captain obvious, but Captain obvious, but uh, you know, just getting more voices participating in that discussion and to determine. I think hopefully that and I've mentioned it several times in the last few meetings is what what is the goal of the district? What is the goal of the community for the district? Where what do we want for our kids? How, and how much are we willing to pay for all that? Right. So back it up a little bit, let's, let's get the community more involved, talk about the things that we've been talking about here for the last few weeks, um, and, and see where it goes. So, I did not sit down and put down an exact plan of how to accomplish that and what that looks like exactly, or, but I think that... to me there would be two different, um, two different plans for that based on a, a decision of a, a March or a November issue. And I know you don't want to talk numbers right now, but I think there would be two different communication plans. Uh, I don't think there's time, if this board decided tonight to put on a, a March issue, there's not time to set up a committee that meets three times a year and has input in various ways. It's, it's a more immediate um, gathering of people for you know details where if we're talking a November issue then you could be talking about let's have a, a community meeting and people get to ask um, you know, finance questions and then we have another community meeting 
and people get to say, you know, here's what we need to hear from you as far as communication. Um, and, and we move along. We form the committee differently, if that makes sense, than um, just trying to form a committee right now to get the information out if there's a March letter. It just, I, I think it's a fine idea. It's just a little bit different format depending on when a levy is proposed. Um, and make sure I'm clear. I mean, I, and in no way, shape, or form am I speaking about this or saying about this in regards to a levy. I'm, I'm just, I'm talking about I'm talking about a different way of doing business going forward. So, I so I, in my in my brain, it you get it you get it started. Okay, you, you you start with the formation. I think I think the long, I think the fact the sooner we do it, the better off we are. The quicker we can get things done, and, and do some education and, and whatever whatever it ends up being. But I, in my opinion, it's not. It's not driven by whether it's a March levy or by a November levy. It, it's driven by this is how we're going to do things differently. What's going to start in your mind? The only thing, yes, you yeah, absolutely. The only thing is, if we were to say that Amy is going to report in January of some formats, um, then the board makes a decision. Okay, this is the format. It's February until there's a committee formed and then it's March till they so that's why I say that depending on the decision that's made as far as a levy this committee this idea of community forums can go forward in any format that we want it's just going to take a little bit different complexion for the immediacy of information if there's a March levy as opposed to a November levy. Agreed. I, I would like I would like to hear if we can find out some things that the local some school districts around us are doing, I mean, I, I would like to hear what that looks like, what the impact has been from those, mm -hmm. what's been good, what's the pros, what's the cons. Well, we've had um, we've had uh, advisory, we've had superintendent advisory committees and board advisory committees previously in the district, um, so we have different formats that we can look at too that we've used in the past. I think you, I feel like you guys are just talking about two completely different things. Like you're saying our needs immediate if we're going from March to involve the community right. and get the message I'm, out there. Where what I'm saying is, it's not sufficient for this board to say, "Let's do this committee." I think that we should, whatever that format takes. This advisory, this community conversations, do business differently. But that's not sufficient if we are talking about a March levy. There are going to be many other communication needs between there's now there's and March. Specific, there's we need specific to do different things. So I'm not saying don't do one or the other. I'm just saying yeah. they're they're very different. And I I don't feel that the community would be very supportive of a board that said let's do a, a levy here or let's do a levy here either one let's do an operating levy in march or let's do an operating no in november and let's take a while and get something started to talk about it but i think there's an immediate need and there's a long-term change in communication <coughs> and what you're talking about speaks i think to the long-term communication need change our direction change our way of doing business So that we'd like to hear suggestions that you have for them to find out for the longer term. Um, the other piece of the puzzle I kind of wanted to throw out there is the community advocacy part. I've uh, been looking, you know, we, we belong to the Alliance. What, is it just called the Alliance? Mm -hmm. The Alliance for <coughs> There we go. Uh, yeah. Alliance. So which, whatever, eight years ago it was like 20 schools and I think it's 150 or 160 schools now and they are, you know, we participate in that um, and that, that has made some inroads on advocacy in some ways but not in 
my opinion, not a very broad based way. Um, there's, you know, there's some things in the work with uh, Cuff Patterson and things like that, but I think it's, it's, it has smacked us in the face what we're faced with. The comments have been made that it's not sustainable, and uh, I don't think you can argue that. So, you know, what, what I would like to see is uh, put together an advocacy group, not only just love one, but also form it with local school districts and uh, take this fight up to take it up to Columbus and just make it crystal clear that this is not working. And for a community like ours, it is definitely not working. So the Alliance in general represents districts like ours. There's a great deal of um, advocacy and lobbying for um, districts that have higher, um, higher populations of poverty. Uh, so access and equity to programs is a strong advocacy lobbying group that gets with legislators. Um, typically, districts with um, lower incidence of poverty have a difficulty, have, we have difficulty getting grants, we have um, our, our lack of numbers in that area, while it's not, a, well, I'm not suggesting that's not a significant need for our support and service in the community, it, it tends to eliminate us from ability to get grants. So the Alliance in general has been focused on supporting and lobbying for districts like ours that um, are seen as wealthy by the state and the state says local taxpayers are responsible for funding the majority of school budgets and uh, we don't have the same access to <coughs> grant funding and some of the different um, uh, revenue streams that districts that have higher poverty and higher needs, don't get me wrong, have access to. So the Alliance was created to have a voice for those um, our districts like ours at the table. So I think that that's a great avenue to work with them. Um, I think that there are districts within the Alliance that would be facing or near facing some of the similar issues we've had. So identifying some key community members in, in all of those districts and some key board members to work along with Tony and the Alliance and the lobbying group, I think would be an excellent idea. Alliance for High Quality Education. Thank you. I think there was an H and a Q. And a Just ask him about the numbers now. I assume she's going to share. That's what I, I can, I'm just looking. Sorry. I, I don't teach math, as Ned pointed out. <laughs> so I was just making sure and thinking about the homeowner, what, 7.5 mil, 6.95, and then what, 6 mils would look like yearly. So, I just want to make sure that that is right. I can write it on the board if you want. <laughs> So, I mean, between seven and a half mils, which we haven't talked about, but, oh yeah, we did. And 6.95 for somebody in a $100,000 house is less than $20 a year. So, like, I'm thinking about the neighborhood I live in yearly at 6.95 would be $608 a year compared to $656 a year. Just trying to think like what's practical, feasible for community members without sacrificing, obviously, instruction and stuff. Any other comments, questions, concerns? concern is just <clears throat> the districts you have said it is it's in the business of educating children not of running levies and campaigns for levies and stress <coughs> caused by levies 
and part of at least my decision has to be has to take that into consideration. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, this this has become a full time job. Yeah, uh, it sucks. <laughs> um, so I, I mean, I to jump on and coach. I, I, yeah, I, the the business of the school district. This is just me talking. Yeah, the business of the school district is to educate kids, right? Um, it's a necessary evil at the moment, um, but the, the, the job of the school district is not to pass levies, and it has become, you know, if we're, if we're sitting here looking at a March levy or a November levy, we're looking at, unfortunately, a short period of time with the March levy, but we're looking at 11 months for the November levy. And me personally, I would much prefer to see this school district get back on with what it's really supposed to be doing, which is educating our kids and planning for how we're going to educate our kids. So I've spent a substantial amount of time with the telephone stuck to my ear and emails and uh, reading your comments and all that. I love you guys, but you guys, you are no help. Um, no, I'm kidding. You are so. I mean, you take all that into you take all that into account. So, I mean, if I'm going to throw something out there, I mean, for me, for me personally, I, I would much rather put on a full court press and try to get a March levy passed. Um, that coupled with a number of things, you know, we, we we're talking about getting an open checkbook out there, so we're working on the transparency of the district. The reason I bring up, you know, uh, 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 Ned brought up a uh, community committee, mm -hmm. communication, decision making, um, compensation committee, you know, I can send these to be started, we need to get to work on that. And then the advocacy part of it, uh, we, you know, for, so just from a, whatever you want to call it, a, a five-spoke wheel, trying to trying to accomplish some things and do it from multiple directions. Um, listening to numbers, yeah, I, I get I. For me, six mills doesn't work. I mean, I, I, we sit here and we talk. We talk about keeping the trajectory going for the education process, keep some of the things, some of the programs and uh, things like that that we've worked on for the last three or four years. Um, we're talking about people. Um, that's probably the hardest part. But for me, I personally would want to look at that 6.95, and I know it's not a big thing. I think it's time to revisit the pay to participate, and I realize that's only sixty or seventy thousand dollars, but that takes it down to 6.88. Um, personally, we're talking about some things here, and I understand that this is the big stuff. And uh, that there are probably some little things out there. I was kind of hoping to hear that actually we, we could get a little bit further. Um, so I guess my two cents. I personally would support a March levy and I would support 6.88. The discussions that I've had with people to me, although there is concern about getting it done in two months, um, 
there seems to be a substantial amount of support at that 6.95 level. Matter of fact, there was a lot of support, honestly, or I'll say a lot, that's a big word. Um, there was support at the 7.95 level, but uh, I think 6.95 in talking with people <coughs> seemed to be the number they felt would satisfy a lot of things. So that's my two cents. The 6.95 if it were to pass in March, still comes with it the possibility of a busing issue? No, no. no. Does not. that's at that's six. That's at that's six. 6.95, that was still 18 fewer employees. Mm -hmm. Which I, piggybacking on what they said, agreed that, and I know this is not going to be popular, and we all have our social media tonight. But I agree that March is what we need to do in order to continue educating the children in the best way possible. When Amy said 18 fewer people, I understand that some of that's by attrition, but the teachers were like, no. So I would say to everybody in here, if you have an opportunity, go sit in a classroom that has support and go sit in a classroom that doesn't have support. There is a tremendous difference in the education that the children are able to receive. And I see some people shaking their heads now. Please, we invite you, do it. Witness it. It's a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. I agree with that. The only thing I would say is if someone was to make a resolution to a resolu for the resolution of necessity, if it was going to be the 6.88 before we make that resolution, I would like to have our treasurer confirm because we sort of sat here and they gave us three scenarios and then we said, well, what do we do with this? And I want to make sure they have the right numbers. I don't want to do it and then, oh, it wasn't really 0 0.07 mils, it was 0 0.05 or something. I don't want to go to 6.88 if we don't have that all vetted with the calculator, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. I, I did it. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I brought a calculator. So I feel comfortable with, with going down with points here. So thank, thank you. So just to add, I, I agree with that as well. However, I also believe that we absolutely have to go out quickly and clearly with the numbers, what this is, what it's not, what's being cut, what those values are, and be very clear with that. Not, uh, nothing vague about this. This will be dependent in a short time frame on very clear and detailed communication on what this is. versus the seven, I'm thinking a dollar sixty-six a month. I'm just, I'm just processing it through. I'm, and, and that allows us to keep more of our staff? No, the 6.88. So 7.5 or 6.88 is still of 18. But it's so still all of that number. stuff that, that 7.5 is 14 staff members. 6.95 is 18 staff members. It's four additional staff mm -hmm. members in between those. So the only way to, the only thing that 6.88 does is do the pay to play. It does nothing. Off of the 6.95. It doesn't add <coughs> up the <staff> back in. <laughs> Which, just to be clear, that is simply an increase to what is more of a standard rate in other schools. It's not. Right. 
Right. It's going to, <coughs> play, it's going to take the fall to six hundred dollars. This is we're talking. This is just a relative increase. One hundred seventy-five dollars, and again, make sure one hundred seventy-five dollars for the all sports, with the exception of football and lacrosse. They would also go up another seventy dollars, right? So that would be two hundred. So is I that can, how you did it? So I did it five one seventy-five across the board. I mean, we could we could adjust that. It's not going to make a huge difference, but that's all I'm talking about. Um, I don't know if you're able to do this right now, but working between the 7.5 and 6.95, just starting at that 7.5 point, but if we still reduce PD, professional development, instead of reducing the instructional cycle in half, did the set reduction in the instructional cycle by 75% there, move the pay to play here. So to get the 7.5? Well, because you already have, it's including everything you have in the 7.5, but then well, so they're working adding on that number. I'll let them work on that The number. instructional I cycle still from down here to that. There will number be community and pay to participate input that you said at six months. That says, years. because I felt for our November levy that we were communicating, had have been communicating all along what we spent, that, that things were clear, that our numbers were out there for anybody to see. Um, and, and obviously that's not what was received by the community, that the community told us clearly that they weren't seeing the numbers that we said we believed they were seeing. So I agree totally with Ned that whatever we do, whether we start the long haul to a November levy or we go the short rush to a March levy, there has to be a different way that we show people numbers so that they know what we're doing. I don't know what that is. Um, again, I thought we were, I thought we were transparent, but we have been told we are not. So we have to figure a way to get that information out. And I, that's where we need an extended, call it whatever you want, the community committee. Um, or communications committee or whatever, but we need we need an extended group. To do I'm, that. I'm just not sure the committee. I mean, I, I, we've had a group of people. I think it's a larger group of people that we need to speak to. So a, a committee yeah. may be the way to get it out there, but I, I just want to be certain that we, um, you know, I feel like I made a mistake of not hearing everybody, although I thought I was. I, I don't want to make that mistake again, that I'm not hearing what's... So we need help getting it out there. I mean, that's, I think, what that committee would help us get that word out. I, and I agree that the role. committee would help. I'm just, I don't want to hang my hat on, okay, we're going to have this community committee and they're going to talk about all this stuff and then everybody's going to know. Um, because, um, again, I thought lots more people knew lots more than they're telling us they did. So we need, a, we need a spot that someone can go to that we can easily access, as you said earlier, online or wherever it is, that the community can access it and we can access it and it can be a back and forth to get the information out. I mean, open checkbook may be the, the easy portal that, um, you know, I, that? I see open checkbook having all the information that we already have available and it, it hasn't been, um, accessible to, in other words, people have not said, oh, I see all your numbers now, and I'm not sure that seeing all our numbers now on Open Checkbook is going to answer questions that people have about all our numbers either. That's Perfect. all I'm saying. And I think that's to your point if we need to come up with what we're going to do as well, yeah. five of us, um, as a board. <coughs> and Open Checkbook is going to provide information who really want to dig into the numbers. But if someone, the average resident who is trying to get clear and concise information quickly is not going to do that from checkbook. They're not going to sit there and do all the work, you know, that it's going to take to get to the numbers that 
we and did we did we have a place to go? Yes, online, but it was also 82 pages or whatever it was, and that again doesn't make it easy to figure out what you want quickly in a concise manner. So. Well, that open checkbook, open checkbook gives you the numbers, but it doesn't give you a why. Right. It doesn't. It doesn't say, well, what was the district thinking when they budgeted this much money for that? Um, it, it just is. There's the money that was budgeted or spent for that. It doesn't give you a why. The English teacher finished her numbers over there. If it has to be made, in my in my opinion, there. If we do we do a March levy, just to be clear, in my opinion, there's, and the March levy passes, when the March levy passes, um, there there is not the opportunity for a November levy that has anything to do with master planning or anything like that. I'm just saying for me. I mean, oh, you're saying you're yeah. making for a me, statement, not asking a question. Yeah, I'm saying. Oh, no way. Yeah, okay. I'm just, but I want to make sure that's clear that we come with a March mm -hmm. levy that's an operating levy. And uh, thanks. Appreciate it. We come with a March <coughs> levy. standpoint of master planning we, we have to back it up again talking about backing the bus up uh, you know we, we take the bus back to whatever square that is and whatever square that is in my opinion that, the op that does not provide an opportunity to do any kind of bond or PI or any kind of levy like that in November so one man's opinion Agreed. It's still too much work to do. Okay, just making sure that it's clear that they, in no way, shape, or form is the intent to come back in November with something else. All right. Um, save the best for last. There's one more piece of the puzzle, and that is Grailville. additional information, potentially additional meetings with them. I know that she said, no, we're not budging on this or that, but it never hurts to talk and ask questions. So I don't see any upside to pulling that right now. But again, we don't get any, any rebates or anything. So, and I think our emotions are still really raw from, from everything. And it would be a hasty decision to get rid of it right now I think we need to vet everything out and see if there's other if there's other solutions before we make that decision um, perhaps you know in the beginning of January it's just it doesn't save us money and it doesn't cost us money to hold on to it through our contract and voters would know prior to the election yes. what the decision would be correct yeah the elect work. Yeah, but you'd have that information going in to cast your vote. <clears throat> there, 
there's still information to be found out and there's no good business reason to pull anything at this point. I heard people asking questions about the, uh, I, I'm not sure, I, I know we did what we wanted to do with the committee, we presented what we wanted to present, but, but I heard people asking lots of questions about the options that don't involve uh, additional land and I think there are questions to be answered about that whether it's yes we can or no we can't do that but here's something else that we can do so I think that we need to consider go back and look we had all that not all that information we had a lot of information about building on land we own as opposed to um, building on land that we would buy um, so I think that there's there are still answers to be provided um, concerning building on land that we own um, that I think can also be provided uh, prior to a March election. Yeah. Yep. I agree. And should be provided. So, I, I agreed with Eileen this morning. At noon, I didn't agree with you. At 3 o'clock, I agreed with you. <laughs> it's uh, 7.30 now, once you're there. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, Gra Grailville is, uh, is pain in my backside. <clears throat> so, based on discussions based on input that we've received you know that there's either the no way in this world if we still have Grailville you know it's almost being it's it's being held that we stick with Grailville that it will not support a marsh levy all the way even up to people who think we need Grailville but they don't believe that we are able to pass a March levy with Grailville still on the table. Um, I guess if I, I guess if I believe that there was something there, solid at this moment in time, something for us to pursue, something to the benefit of the community, I, I would say stick with it. I would honestly, at this moment in time, I would much rather get a March levy passed and revisit it at a later date. So my two cents is that, you know, I've heard everything, I've heard, just go ahead and let it expire. I just don't, I don't, I mean, I, I see some benefit to it, you know, that could, something could pop up or whatever. It's concerning to me that what really, you know, from a business standpoint, what really concerns me is that you know in listening to Terry that we cut it loose and quickly a developer snaps it up so then not only do we do we have an opportunity gone but now we also have homes being built and that's adding to our problem I like the idea of being able to move the schools and freeing up the property on Lovell Madera Road. I like the fact that Lovell Madera Road, you know, and again, we, we, could, we could double our commercial, and right now that means about $54 million in added tax base, so, but it's better than a kick in the head. So free up the space on Lovell Madera Road um, and bring some commercial in there. So. I'm somewhat talking out of both sides of my face at the moment, to be honest with you. But right now, honestly, me personally, I'm more interested in getting a levy passed in March. So, I, I, yeah. I would prefer that the board have a discussion and the board be, rather than um, having sets of information that are we don't have the numbers in front of us. Uh, we don't have that report that we had in front of us of 
is there or isn't there any demand? I would rather have a discussion that says, if we let go of Granville, yes, there is a possibility, or no, there isn't a possibility. I'd rather have that discussion and know what we're getting into, so that if we say, absolutely, we've looked, there is no other land, if we let go of Grailville, we're building on the sites we have or renovating on the sites we have, then I know what I'm doing, and I, I don't feel sure enough about that tonight to make that decision tonight. I know that, again, might be unpopular, but I would rather have that discussion and be sure of what I'm saying. If I say no, forget the Grailville contract, am I saying we're going to keep looking and maybe a piece of land will come up? Or are we saying we are building on the sites we have and that means we have to find a place to put trailers? I, I would like to have that discussion. I wish I could have had it a few weeks ago, but I would like to have that before I decide that. Agreed. That's why I said I'm not saying I'm in favor of purchasing the land. I'm just saying leave it there as a, a potential option with further discussion so we can explore everything fully before deciding to pull it or not. Why? It's my responsibility to make the best decision for the district and I am not ready to cut that loose at this point because of that. As I think said, it doesn't mean I made a favor of moving forward with it at this point. But there are still questions that need to be answered before I would be in favor of terminating it. So we need to have those discussions. I know I agree with both of them. I mean, that's I, it's, I just think we need to explore everything. We have to have that information in front of them, in front of us, to make the best decision possible for the district. But we certainly don't want to wait till March first. No. discuss the grail property so that it's not necessarily running up against that that yep. deadline. Sorry, it's okay. Yes. <laughs> it's okay. I was nodding my head. He was looking yeah. I mean I think everybody said yes. that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the January meeting so uh, the first one's on the ninth second one has not been determined yet because we haven't had the organizational meeting, but typically it's in the 20s. Right. So it would be most likely the 23rd, if you base it off of last year. Right. Is that a work session? No. Well, a regular it, business it, meeting. Yeah, so. it would be a regular business meeting. And then February 4th would be the first work session if we follow the pattern. Setting a date as to what to discuss here or like that. The January 23rd meeting should give us enough time to get the information for us to get together and start composing our questions that still need to be answered. That's next week, Tisa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Christmas. Did you? What did you say, Michelle? January 21st. If that. 23rd, I think, is when they, well, that's a Thursday. The 21st, you're right. The 21st. The 21st. I mean, typically, mm -hmm. for our organizational meeting, we can cover a, a lot of, it, it's also a regular meeting, I and mean, it does a lot of the business that needs to be handled in January. And so we might be able to make, to carve out time on January 21st 
to be sure that there's time for that. Or the 23rd, potentially. Or the 23rd. Uh, the 23rd, so it's, it's the typically the, the fourth Thursday in January. Uh, That's what it was last year, at least. Oh. Where have you been on Thursday? It was a Thursday last year. Yeah. Do we have to get moved for somebody? Potentially. It, on that list of possible meetings that came out, I think it was on the 21st. Well, probably the Tuesday, because oh, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, okay. the 21st. Again, we could also be prepared to discuss, again, if there's a motion tonight to put a resolution of necessity on the agenda tonight, we have to meet next week to do the um, resolution to proceed. We could potentially allow some time next week for discussion about communication and include in that the discussion of information we need concerning Railville and, and building and whether that January 21st meeting is sufficient or whether we need another meeting because we just love to have meetings. Christmas Eve is the next Tuesday. Christmas Eve is the next Tuesday. Okay. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> so, next, if we have a meeting next week, it would only, at this moment in time, there's only one thing on the, would be one thing on the agenda if a motion is right? If nothing happens, then there's no meeting next week. Correct. Correct. So, just be the okay. kind of resolution to proceed. And then if we wanted to talk. <clears throat> is, that, is that enough time to prepare some things? Talk to from a communication standpoint. Let's talk to oh your colleagues. Colleagues, uh, yeah. Uh, from the from the committees. From the committee. yeah. yeah. But from a communication standpoint, it's about how yeah, we get to March, sure, but not to get to what other schools do. Yeah. Those those larger systems. That's going to be nightmare try. Well, we want to do that right as well. I think so. Okay. Anything else? Do you want to do the rest of the, I mean, I don't think the resolutions that are on the agenda, do you want to do those and then do a, uh, if, if it's a couple of moments for things to percolate, you want to do those and then have a resolution to amend the agenda if we're going to add it? Because there's not a resolution on here, right? So no, right. we either need a motion now so to amend the agenda to include a resolution of necessity, or if we're not, then we just go with the rest of the agenda and adjourn. Yeah. Um, could I ask for a five minute recess? You can do anything, you're in charge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, how about, how about a five minute recess? All right. All right. Be back at. Be back in five. Check out the rest of this. Okay. Check out the trombone. Go listen to the music. Oh,
Everybody ready? Let's, uh, let's move on to the resolutions real quick. Um, super, yeah, superintendent resolution. Can, can I just say one thing? Uh, Mr. Knapp asked if we would move our microphones a little closer to us. Because okay. I think there was a um, question of people not being able to hear us when we spoke. There are also lots of chairs. Yeah. I know it's a little bit like church and it's a late game, but you can set up front if you want to. So, all right. All right, so resolution 3.1 to approve course adoptions for 20. Resolution passes. <coughs> All right. I would like to make a amendment to the agenda to add a resolution. That resolution being to do a what's the term? What's the, the determination? It's a resolution necessity. necessity. Yeah. For a March levy for six point eight eight mills. A second. Mr. Court. Mr. Fourteen seconds. And that's just a motion to amend the agenda. That's not the resolution. That's correct. I guess, yeah. So, I have a motion to amend the agenda. Discussion? Mr. Hall, please. Dr. Lorenz? Yes. Ms. Pettit? Yes. Mrs. Washburn? Um, no. Mr. Bortin? Yes. Mr. Jarvis? Yes. Agenda is amended about four to one. All right, so I'll repeat. So we'd like to um, again, was it necessity? Jeez, resolution, of necessity. resolution of necessity for a March levy for 6.88 mills. Do we need any more than that on the resolution? I can actually send you the resolution and you can read it. I, I have a Word document prepared in case you were going to be doing this. And I, I it has a bunch of whereases, right? Yes, yeah, a lot of whereases, but you know, I can send it to you. It's, a, it's, the, it's the standard one that we use when we do the... Oh my gosh. Resolution, <laughs> resolution of necessity. Of necessity. Good Lord. All right. All right. So it just doesn't have numbers and dates and whatever on it, right? Numbers and dates. Well, I mean, it's just a preparation in case. Right. But it doesn't have 6.8 on it right now, right? It's, <coughs> I mean, I've added 6.8. You just had, you added it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, remember how much he loves numbers. Uh, right. Okay. So the, the question was, was the resolution I just said, is that enough to put it onto the, onto the, uh, the agenda. So Thank you. It's a resolution declaring it necessary to levy an additional tax in excess of the 10 mil limitation. Is what the resolution is called. All right. Would you, All like, right. Would you like me to read it? I'd, I'd be happy to read it. Sure. Sure. Right. Go ahead. All right. Whereas the amount of taxes which may be raised within the 10 mil limitation will be insufficient to provide an adequate amount for the necessary requirements of the school district. And whereas a resolution declaring the necessity of levying, a, levying an additional tax outside the 10 mil limitation must be passed and certified to the county auditor of Hamilton County in order to permit the board to consider the levy of such a tax and must request that the county auditor certify to the board the total current tax valuation of the school district and the dollar amount of revenue that would be generated by the tax. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Education of the Lowland City School District, Hamilton, Claremont, and Warren, Warren Counties, Ohio, two thirds of all members elected thereto, concurring that section one, it is necessary to levy an additional tax in excess of the 10 mil limitation for the purpose of paying current operating expenses of the school district. Section two, the question of such additional tax levy shall be submitted to the electors in the entire territory of the school district at the election to be held therein on March 17th, 2020. All the territory of the school district is in Hamilton, Claremont, and Warren Counties, Ohio. Section three, such additional tax levy shall be at a rate not exceeding 6.88 mils for each $1 valuation, which amounts to $0.688, so 68.8 cents for each $100 of valuation for the purpose of paying current operating expenses of the school district for a continuing period of time. Section four, such additional tax levy shall be placed upon the tax list and duplicate for the current tax year commencing in 2020, first due in calendar year 2021, if a majority of electors voting thereon vote in favor thereof. Section five, the treasurer of this board is hereby authorized and directed to certify a copy of this resolution to the county auditor of Hamilton County, Ohio. This board hereby requests that the county auditor certify to this board the total current tax valuation of the school district and the dollar amount of revenue that would be generated by the levy if approved by the voters of the school district. All right, this last section. Section six, it is hereby found and determined that all formal actions of this board concerning and relating to the passage of this resolution were taken in an open meeting of this board and that all deliberations of this board and of any of its committees that resulted in such formal action were in meetings open to the public in compliance with all legal requirements, including Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22. Could you read that again? <laughs> so we have a, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Mr. Fourteen seconds. Who motion? Who motion originally? Okay. okay. We have a motion. We have a second. Do we have discussion? So we have a vote yet. No, I know. So just clarifying, we are at where we were tier one, tier two, with the addition of the increased. Pay-to-play fees, estimating a is it three and a half percent projection. This is where this number comes from, correct? For the five-year forecast, yes. Currently, it's it is sub three and a half percent, correct? Yeah. And did we mention what the cost? I, I <clears throat> know we did the cost per hundred, and I know you gave the number per hundred dollars, but. We had the seven and a half at two sixty two fifty, the six point nine five at two forty three twenty five. What difference does that six point eight eight make? It's two hundred forty dollars and eighty cents, so it's a difference of two dollars and forty five cents. Okay, thank you. Per hundred thousand valuation. Right. Discussion. Did you want to ask the question you wanted to ask about the instructional? Yeah. Sorry, my brain numbers. <laughs> so, I know you said that you were right. I asked Amy about the instructional cycle question. And she said that she did say that the 7.5 is 50% and then down at 6.95 it's reduced to 75%. Yeah, I'm sorry. Maybe it was So right. I'm just trying to figure out what the numbers would look like. I mean, this is from the original list. That's from the original list. But what happens if that percentage of reducing PD goes up slightly? That's from the original list. And then taking the instructional cycle from 50% to 75%, and increasing pay to play, so that eliminates, hopefully, by flipping some of those. I'm thinking then you <coughs> can keep more of the people 
and get rid of some of the services, if you will. Yeah, um, so, so 0.55 mils, uh, if you're going down to 6.88, 6.88, It's roughly about $560,000. Um, <coughs> our current PD budget is about $140,000. So taking 10% off of that is 14 grand. So if you take that new one, oops. Take a significant chunk out of that. Okay. Um, and what did you say doing a 75? Reduction of 75% instead of 50. It's an extra hundred thousand dollars a year. An extra, so what's the total? Three hundred. So total is three hundred. That instructional cycle was four hundred thousand to start. So cutting it in half got us two hundred thousand dollars. Cutting it seventy-five got us another hundred thousand dollars. So if you're if you're thinking of moving the seventy-five percent up, taking your seven and a half mils. And moving to 75 percent up there, it's only it's getting you a hundred thousand dollars, which is uh, less than a quarter of a mil. Am I correct? If we're talking nine hundred thousand dollars. I guess it's just trying to piecemeal. I understand what you. Yeah. Mean. Because and then what percent or amount did you say? It's like it's sixty to seventy thousand. Trying to change the seven and a half mil ask to seven to get it lower by moving by something from the six point nine five, mm -hmm. but you need but still keeping the people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know you've looked at every scenario. We now have to add custodial staff to take care of the, the table. Clean, the clean up better. I'll just use my sleeve. It's okay. I'm on the way. Some schools have whole walls like that. You can all over it. You know? It's getting it off. That's the, is it the key yeah. part. Right. Yeah. All walls you can write on. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. <Right. laughs> all right. So questions or comments? Concerns? Are you able to move it? To say no. Just uh, as we discussed before, I mean, we believe this is doable and significant impact. I believe that the principals can make those decisions that will keep them as far away from, allow them to continue to make progress towards their goals. But you said earlier when we were first presented the numbers at 6.95 that this level begins to affect and impact the students. Yep. Yes. All right, I was just clarifying. I was saying, I mean, <laughs> even 7.5 impacts our ability to be flexible and for decision making, but that was my, that was my uh, list for how do we continue on the same trajectory, and then you start. I guess the only comment I would have is my assumption would be that for, for this levy in March to be considered by some of the, I, I think that this levy in March would be considered by many of the people we've heard from. 
but for some of the people that we have heard from from the community for this levy to be considered the community will need to see that we have seriously considered our spending and I'm not positive that we have yet done that certainly we have looked at what allows us to fix our forecast to allow us to do this but I think there's work to be done to show to the community what we are doing with our spending and again I'll repeat what I said before that I believed that this district was showing to the community what we were doing with our spending but I was proven wrong that people did not um, understand did not hear did not um, uh, necessarily um, agree with um, and so I think there is certainly work to be done to show what we have done with spending not not with this list of cuts but what we are doing with spending continue to do with spending plan to do with spending in the future whether it's to keep the, the increase at three or three and a half percent as opposed to four percent whether it's to show um, a variety of reasons for things I just think there is work to be done um, with this levy or with a November levy. Um, Amy, one last question. If, if we did not go out with March levy, would that affect at all any decisions in August? Would we make cuts with an assumption that we would. So we have to prepare for that. So if, if we, if you're, if you land on six point eight eight then we'll we will develop a, a sort of a cut list or a contingency plan for november that looks like 5.88 like how would we ask for less 6.9 i'm saying we didn't go out much right so the same would be true then for november is we would have to we would have to be clear about what kinds of cuts we would be looking at if the november failed so that would be all of those plus that four million in order to accommodate that loss of a year so sure that would exist but i'm not at all prepared to talk about what does a four million dollar cut i mean that works you know that's 40 50 staff members to get to that level of um how we might try to message what would happen if that failed in november so yes we wouldn't change necessarily what we did going into it, but you'd have to be able to talk through what does that look like in order to recover from a failure for another loss of re another year loss revenue. If we were not to pass it, correct. Right. But why would you go into November with a different amount than March? You wouldn't. I'm just saying that what comes heard, after, heard okay. yeah. else? Mr. Holland, please. <clears throat> Dr. Lorenz? Yes. Uh, Mr. Fortune? No. Ms. Pettit? No. Mrs. Washburn? Out there, and uh, 
we need I'm to. I'm not sure there's supposed to be question I mean, discussion once a question's been called. But if you want some more discussion, there's already two no votes, so it won't pass because you needed two thirds, and so that won't work. It has to be a four-one vote or a five-zero vote. Am I correct on that? Yeah, I'm just double checking your resolution. I'm, I'm pretty sure you read that it has to be two thirds. Yeah, I thought it said it took four. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not sure the vote right. is. Um. And I think the impact and the implications of waiting until November are too much <coughs> on the kids, <coughs> the teachers, the community. So is that a yes or a no? Oh, I thought I didn't have to vote because it didn't hmm? matter. No, you got to vote. Yeah, I think you have to vote, but I'm just telling you. I don't agree with the amount, but I would say yes because it would be better than nothing. Mr. Jarvis? Yes. <coughs> Resolution fails. So, so Mrs. Washburn, you do not believe that the amount is correct. No, I mean I'm just I think it needs to be more so we don't sacrifice the education of the kids. Um, and I mean I'm looking at what Mr. Holly provided, and we, as we've said many times, are people heavy industry and the only way to get the number lower is to cut the people and I <coughs> don't want that to happen. Um, and the community says they don't want that to happen yet they're applauding when it's voted down. So I think the number needs to be That's not the community close clapping. Yeah. Okay, I, yes you I are right. I, thank you for the correction. I agree. I think it needs to be closer to the seven point five and I'm just it needs to be closer to 7.95, you said? I'm sorry. No, 7.5. Yeah. I mean, because the difference between 6.88 and 7.5 yearly to a homeowner, yes, there is obviously a difference in the amount, but it isn't significant in the amount. It's not worth people's jobs, and it's not worth sacrificing what our mission is to educate the kids in the best way that we can. That's my opinion. So you know where we would be, Kevin, if we backed out <coughs> the four classified staff? Um, <coughs> just take just some, so it take a little bit of time to cut the rest of this. $250,000 home, which I think is pretty average in our community. We're talking about a $50 a year difference to a taxpayer. The difference, 6.88 would be $602 a year, 7.5 mils would be $656 a year. And again, I'm not saying that's nothing, but when it provides more staff to the kids, $50 in my opinion, is worth it. Tell me yes, about the classified staff, because I <coughs> don't know that you have an issue with going to the 75% instructional right. cycle. Yeah, or, it's the people that's the same point line. for me. Right. So if, if there's another one, if there's not, 
uh, it's it's the same kind. Well, uh, I guess you said six point eight eight, so we may have to submit the agenda first. So, does someone want to make a motion? Yes. Waiting for number four. Okay. So if you, so if we're, if we're looking at it from the per person costs, so roughly we have thirty-five thousand on that previous list. Right here. Yeah. So are we saying that correct? Pay to play is still mm -hmm. in play. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking at four staff coming back, thirty-five thousand. Roughly 0.14 mils. It's, um, it's 0.16 mils. So if you add 0.16 to 0.88, it's 7.04. Mrs. Washburn? Yes. Okay. The agenda has been amended. of 10% in the professional development, the reduction of 14 staff members, right, by <coughs> attrition and the schedule changes and things of that nature, correct? Correct. And then it is a reduction in the instructional cycle, and it's including an increase in pay to play, cycle by 75 percent. Correct. 75 mm -hmm. percent. So it's the removal of the additional staff members. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Is that it? Just the removal of the four additional staff That's pretty much correct. Yeah. That would be for the support. Perfect. Nice sticking point.
Okay, Kevin, so we're working on the discussion right now is trying to get it to 7.04. Is that what I'm hearing? Correct. Okay. What is the difference between 7.04 and 6.95? A uh, difference in how, how much it costs a homeowner? It difference in mill, different, no, yeah, difference in how much it would cost a homeowner. And yeah, what total dollar wise, I guess I already know the answer. Oh, nine. Oh, nine. Six nine five and seven nine four be almost a mil. So that's eighty one thousand dollars, correct? Yeah. 0.09 mils from seven oh four to six point nine five is 0 0.09 mils, and that's eighty one thousand dollars, correct? You're talking about how much? The cost. Of the yes. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's on the budget. So we went from six point eight. Eight uh, or six point nine five. Uh, no, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm off okay. on my own right now. <laughs> okay, so okay. Eight point eight five. No, no way we can find eighty one thousand dollars in little things. I mean, everything we've talked about up to this point is, is big stuff. Right, for lack of a better term, is there? We can't find eighty-one thousand dollars in supplies and postage and to get back to the seven, the six point nine five. Yeah, yeah and, and, and again, Mike. Again, we're 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 whatever. It, so six point nine five. So I'm trying to get back to where we were. Clarify six point nine five. Add the page participate and look for. Eighty-one thousand dollars and correct. Cut everybody's budget. Yes. Nine percent. That that takes care of that saves four people. Yes. So I mean, is that is that unreasonable for to say we can't find? I mean, is is eighty-one thousand that much money in a? Fifty something million dollar budget that we could find eighty one thousand and little little things that don't impact people. Yes, we don't we, don't impact the education process. Yes, we would we dispose it to the principals. We'd sit down and with the administrative team. We, I'm sure we'd, we'd be able to do that. Yeah, it's, there's thirty department budgets. We split that across <coughs> three department budgets. It's not it's not very much at that point. So. Okay. Six point nine five. Would you like to make a motion? Sure. Okay. Please do. I'd like to make a motion for a six point nine five operating levy for March. I second. Ms. Pettit. Okay. Discussion. I'm just a little concerned about the method by which we got to where we are. I'm just, it's been, about the amount or the question. I feel like we've lost. I feel like we've lost the sense of what we're doing. Um, so I just feel there's a need for this board to say voting yes for this resolution is first of all saying that we believe we should do March instead of waiting till November and that we believe we have found a number that makes sense for what we want to do and I feel like that's all been lost in all the kind of back and forth and you know who's pay to play and you know that kind of thing I, I understand why we had to get there I just feel like it should be something that the board says in discussion of that's what we mean by this vote not that we're <clears throat> in the in the weeds trying to manage this part of the budget or that part of the budget that a vote yes on this vote means that a particular board member believes <coughs> that we should go for a an operating levy in march and that we should 
try to stay at that 6.95 level rather than going above it, but rather than cutting so far below it that we cut into the classroom. I don't I realize that's not discussion. That was grandstanding, and I'm sorry. I just felt very uncomfortable with the way we got there. That's all. Sorry. No, I, no, I, I don't mean anybody did. No, I know. Wrong. I'm saying I, I don't mean, think we got into the weeds, though, and I will probably say that I'm supporting a March levy because I haven't lost sight of it. My whole like sh shuffling things around is because I support the kids and the teachers and what's best for the community. And I think that to get there, we needed to do some of that digging into the weeds to move that to prioritize the people who can best support the kids and the teachers. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that anybody did anything wrong. No, no, I, I just meant I was uncomfortable with the way we. No, I'm just saying that I will. That's all. Stay in my yeah. Yep. Anything else? Oh. Mr. Holland, please. And then this has to pass by. Four, uh, four. Thank you. Mr. Bortoon? Yes. Dr. Lorenz? Yes. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Washburn? Yes. Resolution passes. Commentary. All right. Thank you for everybody's time. I know this is uh, this is quite enjoyable. <laughs> I'd say to everybody out there that there is no easy decision. But like Mr. Jarvis said, our ultimate goal is to make sure that we are doing the best job for the kids. Rail bill is five hundred thirty-five thousand. We haven't made a decision on rail bill. Okay. Can I have a motion to adjourn, please. I move. Second. Uh,